after World War II, I got out, went back to school on the GI Bill, and had just graduated when Korea came along. And I got a telegram from Uncle Sam. I didn't have a job, so I was more than happy to go to Korea. Some Air Force general had said that the Air Force could get good care faster than any other way, and especially in Korea where the roads were so bad. So they wanted nurses over there real fast, and they sort of just dumped it over there. We didn't even have a uniform. I went out in the dump and picked up an ammunition box, and that was my medical kit. I was with air evac, which meant that I evacuated the wounded via airplanes. We had small airplanes. This was two engine planes, 46 and 47s. They could land in a very short area, and they had to. Sometimes we would land as close to the front as we possibly could, and so any little level strip of land we would land on. The pilots, I think, weren't given enough credit because they landed on those little strips of land, maybe a mountain on one side and a stream on the other. The Air Force was a supply for Korea. They carried everything from Japan to Korea. I suppose the Navy brought in some things, but the day-by-day -day supplies was furnished by the Air Force. They would pick up, say, ammunition, gasoline, they carried the gasoline in big tanks. I don't know how they loaded it, but to unload it, they put a tire on the ground and rolled the tanks over, and the tanks would bounce and then roll off. I always got off the plane because I was afraid maybe one of them was gonna crash. It was pretty much like MASH. They had a, a thousand bed hospital in Tucson which was way down south of Korea. And when I say North Korea, I mean the north part of South Korea. We flew patients from the North Korea to South Korea or else back to Japan. The casualties were brought back from the fighting zone in trucks to a holding station, which was just on the side of a landing strip, which was just a smooth piece of land and the trucks would bring them to this holding station, which was a tent. And sometimes there was a doctor there, and sometimes it was a nurse. And then we had the Koreans. We picked up the South Koreans, and we also picked up North Koreans. And one time I almost had an incident. I was loading that North Korean patient, and this big Texan from, I don't think, I don't know if he was from Texas, but he was a big, American. He said, is that a North Korean? I said, no, 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 no. But it was, of course, you know. And I said, oh, no, he's South Korean. Because just a few minutes ago, pretty much, somebody had shot him. Some North Korean had shot him. So he wasn't very happy about having a North Korean on board. It was never declared a war. It was a police action. It was international. We had all these different types of people. And I remember one of my patients was a uh, a little Turkish boy, and our men said the Turks were furious fighters, fierce fighters. They said they were glad they were on our side. And this little Turk boy, he was uh, had been injured in his face, so he had his eyes covered up, and he, you know, couldn't understand us. We couldn't understand him, and he couldn't see where he was going. So I wondered what he was thinking. So when the plane took off, I held his hand. In Korea, I was never afraid. And sometimes I would be the only female in miles, but I never felt uncomfortable, never. When people say, oh, thank you for your work, I always say it was the best years of my life. Yes, it was an adventure. I just, every day was a new adventure. There's some things that are very plain and some things are just lost in my memory. I'm going to be 102 in July.